Hello. Today's video is going to be a flip through my most favorite tarot deck. It is this one, the Mutant Tarot. And you saw me work with it for a while. It is this deck that I have used for many, many years. And I now bought a new, not another version. <coughs> Sorry. It's just since this is obviously very used, I bought a new one. Unfortunately, it is also used because it um, is no longer on sale, I'm afraid. So I had to find a new version, but it's in very good condition. And I bought it first. It was actually the second deck I ever bought. I was beginning with the Crowley Tarot when I was 19. That was like my first deck starting with the Crowley Toro and I got this maybe like three years later or so it was my second tarot deck and I saw it in a store and I kind of misread it because this basically means to travel through the er erotic um whoa what's that uh, like myths so the erotic myth and I was reading esoteric myth and at home I was wondering why everybody in this deck is naked <laughs> but I loved it I have always been very very interested in mythology especially the Greek mythology since I had yeah a seminar on that when I was an exchange student in upstate New York when I was 17 years old when I went to high school I had a seminar on Greek mythology that I was very interested in and yeah, this deck, it has three different kind of mythology. I'm going to talk about that later. The Greek mythology, then the more like Celtic mythology, and the German and Northern um, mythology would be the third. But I'm going to show you. So this is from Phoenix. That's the publishing agency. And yeah, those are some of the cards. It has a book, 400 pages, and 79 cards. Usually Tarot has 78 cards, but this one is 79 because there's two devil cards I'm going to show you. And maybe if you're interested, if you still want to find it, you can check it here. Maybe you will find it. So, it comes with a book, and the book has all of the myth. Well, this is the cards. And this is also the star card. So you can see the image of the star card in here. And it's beautiful. Look at this beautiful, beautiful lady who is directly connected to the divine. Very beautiful star. And then this book here. Basically summarizing all of the myth. I have to say I never read it. I know some of the greek mythology since i had been interested in that and i know some of the celtic myth um, mythologies because i am studying at the university uh, medieval german literature and many um, stories were adapted from the original arthur um, legends you know arthur in the round table so of course um, during my uh, studies seminars at the university I took some of those classes as well I haven't read all of them I have to admit because um, in the beginning I was more interested in literature medieval literature but then I shifted my focus um, during my master studies my my um, bachelor studies that's my cat playing with this toy mouse <laughs> I was very focused on children's literature I did my bachelor thesis in Harry Potter many years back he put his toy mouse in his um, water okay sorry and <clears throat> but yeah I was always very 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 interested in um, this kind of mythology but then I kind of shifted my focus more to not liter literature, but more um, texts about astrology and magic in um, the medieval times. So, yeah.
there is again this big book <laughs> that is about say telling about the uh, myth mythos mythologies and we have the classical myths like the odyssey then the celtic as i said and then the nordic um german old german mythology and then there is stories they tell the stories each myth in a couple of pages we have water fire fire earth air of course and um yeah sorry that's my cat <laughs> So that's basically just a summary of all of the cards for those of you who know German. However, we don't want to focus too much on the book. We want to focus on those beautiful, beautiful cards. And I bought it used, so I kind of put them in the right order myself yesterday. So it comes like this. And we're going through each card. No, no, no. So we got the fool, and I'm going to kind of sort them in the different categories as well. We've got the fool, the Parsifal story, and you can tell the ducks are the um, Celtic myths. Then we've got Merlin. Everybody heard of Merlin, of course, the magician. And it says, yeah, Merlin, the magician. This is Parsifal. <coughs> Then we've got a Greek myth, you can tell it from these symbols, the Persephone story. I think she was the one who was kind of kidnapped by Hades and had to live in the under underworld. She's the high priestess. Then we've got Demeter, I think she, well, she is one of Sue's sisters, so it again Greek mythology, the Empress. We've got Zeus, of course, another Greek mythology as the emperor Kathbat, I don't know that story at all but it is another Celtic myth the druid this is the high priest and most decks is called the hierophant but here it's the high priest then we've got of course the uh, mythology of Paris who has had to decide whom he would give his golden apple to but I think is weird is that this is obviously Athena with the owl but in the story if I remember it right it's more like 20 years ago it would have been artemis the greek goddess of hunting and not of um, wisdom but anyway so paris had to give his golden apples to one of the um, goddesses and of course he chose aphrodite because she promised him the most beautiful girl in the world and that's how the trojan war started <laughs> Then um, another myth, I don't know. This is uh, this what kind of leaves my the a chariot, chariot of care or carriage of Kuchulain. It's the chariot. I don't know this myth. Then um, the oracle of Delphi would be justice. Oising the travel of the other world would be the hermit. I love this image, image imagery with all of the um, you know, lights coming down. And strong colors. Here we do have see it's a Nordic or German myth with Gottis. I don't know this one. It's like the magical um, mill, and it's the Wheel of Fortune. The Triumph of Ariadne. I don't know this one. It's strength. This is the Prometheus. I don't know how to say it in English. The Hanged Man. The guy who gave fire to humans. Morrigan, the war um, crow, death. Hemaphroditos, Hemaphroditos the uh, reconciled <laughs> art. We've got the horned god as the devil. And this card has two devils. A male one and a female one so this is um, the gaze of Medusa it's the black goddess so this is the female devil in this deck then we've got Fortigans who wanted to build a tower and it's the tower card this is the queen of stars the star of course um, 
Celine's dream veil would be the moon. Apollo, the illuminated, would be the sun. I don't know this myth as well. This is talking about being reborn. So that should be judgment. Atlas, the carrier of the world, is the universe card. Uh, we've got the lightning uh, spear of Luke and its willpower. This is kind of like the slave. It's not slave, it's not the right word, but something like that of Omphali, Omphil, I don't know. Two of Wands. We've got the Dark of Kulan. It's um, like growth, something like growth, or like blooming. Yeah, this means more like blooming. We've got the Homecoming of Odysseus, the Four of Wands. My favorite card in the deck. So for me, um, yeah, the Four of Wands, even before I saw the original uh, Radio Wade 1111, to me this was always a card talking about soulmates, um, a reunion of soulmates after hardship. This is something like the Trials of Finn. It's uh, being ambitious, ambitiousness. Then we've got Perseus and Andromeda, it's victory, not a Greek myth. Yeah, this is a German one. We got Siegfried who is getting ready to fight the dragon. And this is very similar to the Achilles myth who uh, was, as a baby, his mom grabbed him by his ankle, by his heel and dunked him into the river of sticks so he would be immortal and self, except for on that one part where she grabbed him and he killed a dragon and then bathed in its blood, except for there was a leaf that landed on his shoulder and um, he didn't get any dragon's blood on his shoulder, so he was immortal except for that little part of his shoulder. Yeah, the falling of Icarus, Eight of Wands. Kutsulain's, um, this is like f fighting, like being in a fighting mood, it's like yeah, I don't know the, the word, but it's as strength, basically, nine of wands. I don't know this myth, it's um, oppression. Aphrodite, Afro the temptress, would be the daughter of wands. Achilles, uh, we just talked about him. The victorious would be the son of wands. Maeve, it's the mother of wands. And Uther Pentragon is the father of Vons. Then this is like a king's stone, which is the base, Ace of Pentacles. Beltane, the high time change, Two of Pentacles. This is, of course, the Sisyphus myth, Three of Pentacles work. Reyes, I, I don't know um, this myth, but it's um, something getting closer or getting more ground. Four of Pentacles. Um, the, what is the word? Power, like Medea being powerless. And this is torture. This is probably right after she killed her own children. <laughs> this is the milk of Almanteia. This is uh, the goat that nurtured Zeus. So it means like growth as well. Six of Pentacles. I don't know this um, myth. But this means like something that's falling apart. Seven of Pentacles. The Labyrinth of the Minotaurus. Stagnation. Eight of Pentacles. This is like the blessing of Epona, growth, another word of growth. <laughs> We've got um, the gold of Midas, which means like wealth. Callisto, um, this is a bit similar to being a temptress as well, the daughter of Pentacles. Pan, we've got Pan, the son of Pentacles. Then we've got Danu, she's the... Um, mistress of or the the master of yeah whatever this means <laughs> mother of pentacles 
Concha Bar is the stag king, father of pentacles. And we've got Excalibur, the magical sword, wisdom or epiphany, basically, knowledge. Then the offer of McRoy's, of Fergus McRoy's offer, it's two of swords piece. Arpheus and Eurydice, or I don't know how to pronounce it in English, it's loss, three of swords. Then we've got Kuchulain's um, resting sleep, it is um, truth, I believe is that word, but it's not war, but it's not peace, like in between, like a truce, truth. Not truth as in um, opposite of lie, but like in, it's it's not really peace yet, but something like it, four of swords. Then we've got the um, curse of the, I don't know how to say them, but those are the ones who get justice, basically. Five of Swords. The riddle of the Sphinx is um, science. Six of Swords. This is basically Odin who got rejected. So yeah, it's like rejection or something that didn't happen. It's the cave of the polyphem, something like that. It's resistance, eight of swords. The blood of Nessos, uh, cruelty, nine of swords. Artus and Modred, it's uh, something that's going down, basically. It's, it's the ten of swords. Uatach, the one who wants to battle, <laughs> the one who's seeking fight, <laughs> daughter of swords. Then Odysseus, of course, it's the son of sorts. Hera, the one who will not forgive, or the one who is holding grudges, is the mother of sorts. Then I don't know the smith, Gangrats. Yeah, it's the father of sorts. Then we've got um, the cup of, like, cornucopia, you could say. And, yeah, these of cups. Eros and Psyche is the Two of Cups. Then this Garden of the, I don't know, Hesperidon, Three of Cups. The Kidnapping of Europe, Transformation, would be the Four of Cups. Lancelot and Ginevra, Pain, Five of Cups. The orgies of Dionysus would be the Six of Cups. <laughs> it's also talking about enjoying. Yeah, then this is the Sirens. Seven of Cups. Kirke. She is in the Odysseus story, I believe. This means inactivity, basically, the Eight of Cups. The Horses of Manan. Mananan, something like that is. Nine of Cups, Joy, then Calypso, Ten of Cups, Fun, the Magical, is the Daughter of Cups, Lohigrin, the um, Swan Knight, would be Son of Cups, Thetis, something like that, the um, Sea Nymph, is the Mother of Cups, and Amphortas, the Fisher King, would be the Father of Cups. Yeah, he's connected to the Parsifal story. So you can see there's only five cards that are um, like German and Northern mythology. Most of it is Greek. And then there is Celtic as well. So yeah, you can tell basically most of it is Greek mythology. And you can always tell, of course, by these symbols here. I really really like this deck. To me it has a lot of depth and with this deck I kind of like intuitively learned to look into past lives and when I have like five D readings I would always use this deck instead of the Crowley. The Crowley deck I use more like with what does my person feel for me readings when I check a relationship but whenever it's supposed to go a bit, bit deeper I always feel drawn to this deck so it is 
Yeah, this is what it looks from the back side, by the way. It's my most, most favorite deck. I have used it a lot. So in my readings, of course, it's more like an 18 plus reading. We do have some very sexy imagery. I mean, this is the RD cards. To me, this card, I, I usually, I never, except I would do a sex reading, of course. I would never read this as a sexual card. To me, this is a card that means going out, meeting friends, for example. It's have a good time, raise your frequency, do something good for yourself. And then we do have the high priest. I mean, there's, yeah, this deck, it has high priest and high priestess. I said that earlier, instead of um, hierophant. But I love the mythology of this deck. And if you are interested in mythology, this might be a deck for you, especially if you are an intuitive reader. Since, um, yeah, I mean, there is, great imagery on it and you can find so much I would say and I always feel drawn to something else according to the question sometimes I would notice something that in if I, if I have one question or one pile or one client and then with another client I would feel attracted to something completely else it of course helps if you do know the myth I don't know all of them, like this one, for example, I don't know it, but still you don't know the, you don't have to know the mythology in order to still know what it is. And even if this is a German deck, you will find summaries of all of the myth in English as well, or any other language. I mean, those are very, very famous um, stories. Artists and moderate. Yeah, for me, this card, for example, what I always feel drawn to is those two pathways. There's like one wood that's burning and another one where there is this moonlight. So to me, it always means like you have to leave something old behind, like an old way of thinking, old thought patterns, old emotional patterns, um, a job that no longer suits you. It's always like there is something you're on the wrong path and something has to end, even if it hurts, because you have to take the other path. But the other path there's moonlight and the moon is the unknown. So often it's like, okay, I feel I have to change something, leave someone behind, for example. This card often shows up when somebody is in a relationship they're no longer happy with, you know, and then it's like, okay, maybe you're just um, still stuck in this relationship because you're scared of the unknown. But this is like the feeling is growing like I need to change something in order to start a new life so that is always has been my intuitive reading on this um card so yeah I do love absolutely love the imagery it is um not that easy to shuffle because I have tiny hands and I mean this deck is like my my hand so I can't really I have a hard time grabbing the entire deck like this no, so I can only shuffle them like that or I just usually shuffle them like this and then just draw my cards. And you know, if you draw cards, of course, always you have to use your right hand, your, your left hand because your left hand is connected to the right um, half of your brain and um, that is the one that is for intuitivity. The deck, the cards, they're like um, not that thick, but they're okay. I'm wondering if my old ones were thicker. No. It just, you, you wouldn't believe how many times I spilled teas, tea and water over them. And then I had to like spread them in my entire apartment basically to let them grow. And um, oh no, what did I just do? Did I just put one of the old cards in here? I did, yes. <laughs> the Empress. So this is basically why they do look like this. But yeah. Now I have them shiny and pretty much new. So anyway, I can only suggest you to, to take a look at this stack because, again, I mean the imagery, you see each one of them only has one wing and they can only fly together. So it's very, very strong imagery. 
This is like, do not come closer to me. <laughs> I want to give you something. So there's, yeah, it's it's by far my favorite deck. It really speaks um, to my intuition greatly. So yeah, I can show you again what it looks like. Mutant Tarot. And again, this is maybe you might be able to get it here. I just checked Amazon and it was sold out there, so I bought it used on eBay. But it's a very, very amazing deck. So yeah, I hope this resonated with you and um, all the best. Bye-bye.